back to Song of Solomon and I just want to highlight one phrase. He, he quotes and he says, I awakened you under the apple tree. Takes you right back to Song of Solomon chapter one or two. Right there in her early days. You know what God loves to do over your life? He loves to reminisce over the early days. And he loves to reminisce on the season when you didn't know nothing. You just felt God, God, I love you. I don't know what that means. I feel your presence and I love you and I'm glad to be here. And God goes, yeah, I remember those days too. Those were the days of excitement when you loved me with all your heart. and You had no clue the hell you would walk through, the difficulty you would walk through, the pain you would walk through. And yet I reminisce on those days and I love to brag in my leadership of taking that little nobody knowing anything and walk you through all the seasons. Isn't it awesome? He knows the end from the beginning. He is the God who knows the end from the beginning. He loved waking you into him when you didn't know anything. And he loved sustaining you through hell, through difficulty, through trial, through suffering, and bringing you into the fullness of your destiny. He takes joy in that. Surrender to it. Even when there's weird chapters you don't understand. He's writing a story. He's the author and the finisher of our faith, which means there's some weird chapters. And don't close the book halfway through. I awakened you under the apple tree, which means chapter 1 and chapter 8 are all one glorious storyline. And now we're going to come to arguably one of the greatest phrases in all of Scripture. Jesus is now going to look to her. Some of your translations might say the Shulamite to her beloved, but that's divided over between commentaries over who is saying it. Is it the, her to him, him to her? But when you actually look at the pronouns, they, they're new, they're not even masculine or feminine. They're, you can't really tell. And then you got to go to the next place and, and, and the phrase is going to say this, set me as a seal upon your heart. As a seal upon your arm, for love is as strong as death, jealousy as cruel as the grave. Its flames are flames of fire, a most vehement flame. Many waters cannot quench love, nor can the floods drown it. If a man were to give for love all the wealth of his house, it would be utterly despised. We've now come to the end of the book. And just lock in with me these last 15 minutes. He's going to look at her and, 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 and he, this is what he's going to say. I want you to set me, set my affection, set my pursuit, set my love. And I want you to set it and I want you to order your life, open your heart. And I want you to set me as a seal of divine fire, of divine love on your heart. I want my love for you. To be your primary source of success. I want my love to be your primary source of greatness for your life. I want all the days of your life. I want you to prioritize. I want you to position your life in such a way that my love for you. And the anointing to love me back. Would be the primary pursuit of your life. He says, as you go through every season, that you would set me as a seal upon your heart. That the anointing to receive my love and the anointing to love me would be the number one pursuit of your life. We spent many years in Kansas City where Mike Bickle would always say, I'm loved and I'm a lover, therefore I'm successful. I believe that God wants to set himself as a seal of fire upon your heart. He's going to liken this love. Not only is it, he says, as a seal upon your heart and a seal upon your arm. In Song of Solomon 1, she had a twofold cry. Draw me away and let us run together. Which means I want to grow in intimacy and I want to do ministry with you. And it starts with the cry to be drawn and to run. And it ends with a seal of divine fire on the heart. 
the anointing to receive love and to love him, and then the anointing on the arm, the seal on the arm. The heart is the first commandment. The arm is the second commandment. 